Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. So, my latest obsession has been, as you know it, the most viral thing right now or it was maybe like two months ago but because i'm so slow anyways the point is it's still my favorite thing it is punch rugging and making rugs so today i will be bringing you a short tutorial on how i made my studio ghibli rug okay so to get started with your rug you'll need a couple of things i've got this a2 sized picture frame um, that i'll be using to kind of stretch my fabric over and you need a punch rugging or a punch needle. So this is the one that I got from a pack online. Um, it's adjustable and you can kind of change the different sizes. Um, and I like it because it's versatile. There are lots that you can get on Amazon and if you're in Australia, you can get a super cheap one from Kmart. I think it's like $7 and you get a practice punch rugging thing with fabric as well. You also need a little, what is this called? Like a needle? Something to kind of help the, the yarn go through the loops. Okay, so in terms of fabric, I am using monk's cloth. Monk's cloth is the easiest to stretch onto a canvas. So what I'm doing here is I've cut out my piece and then I'm just using my staple gun to staple it on to the picture frame. Then I searched up some Ghibli photos on Google just for reference and I was tossing up between this Totoro one and Kiki and ended up with Totoro. So I've got my picture and I'm going to try and outline them in all the different colors that I want to use. So what you want to do is kind of just break down the picture into tiny little bits so that it's easier for you to punch rug. The thing about punch rugging is it's very difficult to get um, little tiny details. So you want to create those shapes and hopefully after you finish creating those shapes, it gives you a really good guide on what you um, on where to put the different colors and where to punch rug. Okay, so once you're done kind of tracing everything out, you should have a bit of a guide that looks like this. Because I don't have a projector and I also don't have a printer, I used AirPlay and kind of projected the image onto my TV so that I could trace it out. Okay, now that you've done tracing, you kind of got this outline. that you can start using as your guide to punch rug. So there's actually also two kinds of punch rugging. So there is the looped version. So this is the looped version. And as you can see, there are tiny, tiny little loops that make up this pattern. Whereas there is a tufted version. The tufted version, I will also teach you guys how to kind of create this texture and how to sculpt your yarn so that you can get this kind of 3D tufted rug look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to the highest possible length. So as this is adjustable, I'm gonna make it go all the way here because I want the length to be very long. And so what I'll do is I get the threader, push it through here, and then grab the thread, and shove it through, push it through again, and then Get the hole, push this through again because I want to thread the needle through it. I, I want to thread the yarn through it. So chuck it in again and then push it through. So once you've got that, what you want to do is you want to punch in a direction where the open side is facing where you're going. Once you're done looping, then cut every single one of those loops. Yup, that's right, every single one. Okay, so now we're at this stage where, you know, you've cut all of it and you can see, like, you're probably thinking, why did I go through that whole process of making the loops only for you to cut it? Well, this is definitely a trust the process kind of thing. And what we're gonna do now is go ahead and kind of like give this little green tuft of grass a bit of a shave. And to do that, you're gonna get your scissors and cut in a bit of a diagonal manner. So just like that, and keep kind of like shaping your tuft. Wow, 
what I really enjoy about punch rugging is it's just so peaceful. It's something mindless that I can do to take um, the stress off my mind. Sometimes for me, I just like to sit and relax and do something with my hands and I think it just takes away the stresses of my day. Okay, so I finally finished the grass. As you can see, it just took so long to do this. Anyways, as you can see, I've got the outline of Totoro left over. The only mistake that I made was I forgot to flip my Totoro um, horizontally. And so now he's facing like the opposite direction. But I guess that's not too bad because yeah, I don't mind it, it's fine. But yeah, I'm now gonna move on to the Totoro and I think I'm gonna use a different technique to what I've done here because I want that definition and I want some contrast. So what I'll be doing is using the looped um, technique for the Totoro. And you know, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. You can always pull it out and do it again. And that's like the beauty of punch rugging. To do the outline, I'm using this thick black wool and I'm also going to change the level of my stitch so that it's level four. And what that does is just make it smaller and shorter. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and complete the stitching. Okay, so I've got my tutorial outlined and there's a couple of gaps, but I'll be filling it in later on. And now I'm gonna move on to the rest of it. As you can see here, I used two different types of yarn, so one of them ended up being longer than the other. So I just went ahead and shaved it and turned it into that tufted look to give it some definition. At this point, it's basically done. So it's up to you if you wanna take it off the frame or if you want to leave it as it is. So I cut the fabric off and then I cut about one to two centimeters um, from the edge of the wool. And that is going to be my border. So the first thing you'll need is you need a yarn needle and we're just going to start off really small by just cutting a little bit of yarn. And then we'll thread it through. This needle, like the needle's pretty fat so it should be fairly easy. Just fold this over and put in a stitch doesn't matter if it hits the back, it's perfectly fine. And pull it so that you've got only a couple of centimeters of thread left. Then what you're gonna do is sandwich it here so that it gets covered by the next couple of loops. So just sandwich it with your fingers and then make the next loop. I'm trying to make it as even as possible, but if it's not, it's big of a deal because it still ends up making this whole thing look a little bit neater. Once you've gotten to the end of your thread, just loop it back through these. Pull it through. And trip. Should be fine. Ta-da! Done! And then you just keep doing it for the rest. So I finally finished my Totoro rug after many, many hours slaving away, just working at it. I absolutely love it. It's so fluffy and nice and soft. And I love that there's this contrast between the grass and Totoro. Um, yeah, I mean, the out, outer layer probably wasn't the most even, but I'm not fussed about it. Like this is not going anywhere. This is gonna stay at home. And it just makes me so happy looking at it every day. So, if you guys make something similar, please, please, please tag me on Instagram at Cozy Chic so I can have a look too. But I hope you guys enjoyed this short tutorial that I made. All right, I'll talk to you guys later and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.